Hello and welcome to Glasgow Rangers Nation with me, your host Owen. Guys, welcome to the channel. Um, this is your Glasgow Rangers Nation news and updates. Guys, daily news, daily updates, all for free. Just remember to hit that sub, ring that notification bell. The channel is growing superbly well. I think we're two or three away from getting to 300 subs for a channel only launched in November. So please keep hitting that sub, please keep ringing that bell, and please keep giving the videos likes. Um, yes, I am English. I do apologise for that. I have been a Rangers fan though since 1987. It was Graham Sooners and his bringing of my favourite keeper at the time, Chris Woods, along with obviously Terry Butcher and my love of Ali McCoist, that brought me to Glasgow Rangers. Anyway, let's talk about the latest link to Rangers as Rangers look to revamp their squad over the summer. Something Michael Beale mentioned in his news conference yesterday when he talked about the fact that he'd identified a few players for the board to look at, that they began their scouting and he wanted to have these players in place for the 1st of July. Yes, the 1st of July, obviously, when the pre-season begins so that he can start to build his team and build his squad. Now, the latest link um, is another striker, just like the link to uh, Perot, the uh, Swansea striker, the Dutch Swansea striker. It is another striker and a very, very talented striker. Certainly, when I read this uh, report not so long back, I was very excited by this news. Now, as someone who follows Sunderland south of the border, I am from Sunderland originally, that's where I was born. Um, this player started his career with Sunderland, his professional career. He made his uh, professional debut for the club. His name is Josh Madger. Josh Madger is a very, very talented centre forward. He is quick. Um, he's got great feet. Um, he can turn defenders. He can get, use both feet. He can shoot from in the box. He can be very much that uh, fox in the box that you look for to get goals. He's very good at you know taking over the taking the control, getting it out of his feet, and then smashing it in the back of the net. He can score from outside the box. He links up play well. He is a very very talented forward. And certainly someone that Sunderland obviously had very high hopes for and was sorry to lose. Now, he left Sunderland in the January um, on because of the fact that he was out of contract in the summer um, and went to Bordeaux. Now, in the Netflix documentary, Sunderland Till I Die, he comes out a little bit on the bad side, um, looking like a villain. But, uh, you know, on reflection, looking back at the story, actually, you know, looking at the evidence, it's more his agent that turned his head to the to Girondin de Bordeaux. And also the fact that at that time, Sunderland were being uh, run by two of the dodgiest characters on planet Earth, Del Boy and Rodney, otherwise known as Stuart Donald and Charlie Methven, who make uh, Douglas Park look like, um, I don't know, look like Sultan Abdul, whatever the guy is called that runs Newcastle and the guy that runs Manchester City is. But, you know, he is a quality, quality player. Let's have a little look at Madger's footballing CV and find out a little bit more about him before we talk about what he can bring to Rangers and, and, and a bit further on the type of player that he is. So his name is Joshua, and I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce those three names. They are very hard to pronounce because he is obviously of Nigerian heritage, hence the fact that he has one cap for Nigeria and is obviously a Nigerian international. Uh, so Joshua Madger is his name. He was born on the 27th of December uh, 1998. He's 24, 25 at the end of this year. He's born in Lewisham in England, but obviously still represents Nigeria because of the heritage of his parents. Um, he's five foot eleven. Um, he's a striker. Obviously, he plays currently for Girondin de Bordeaux. Um, his youth career, he came up through the youth ranks at Palace, Fulham, and then he went to Manchester City before moving on to Sunderland between 2015 and 2016. Between 2016 and 2019, he played for Sunderland, where he had 41 appearances, scoring 16 goals, most of those goals coming in the championship. Um, he then obviously went on to Girondin de Bordeaux, where he's had 58 appearances, scored 16 goals, which includes 11 goals this season for Girondin. I'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. He's also been on loan to two teams in England it's during his time with Bordeaux. He went to Fulham in the Premiership, where he scored three goals in 15 games. And he went to Stoke City in the Championship, where he scored one goal in 15 games as part of a very poor Stoke team at that time. Now, Madger, obviously, like I said, plays for Girondin de Bordeaux, who currently play in Ligue 2. Now, the reason they play in the French second division is not because they were relegated for their poor play. They were relegated over financial issues. So that's why they have been put down to the second division. It was not down to the fact that they were a particularly bad team. Madger has had a great success in that second division with Bordeaux this season, like I said, scoring 11 goals. You know, he's looking at some of his tape, looking at some of the video online and looking at some of the stuff from Bordeaux. 
And he's very good at getting, getting across the defender, um, scoring goals. He's got clever flicks around the box. It's one goal where a guy crosses it in from the right and he flicks it with the back of his foot into the back of the net. His shot's very powerful. You know, he seems to be a very talented player. He can get separation from defenders. He knows how to find space in the box. He is a real quality, quality player. Now, someone like Madja linking with the likes of Ryan Kent, if he returns, uh, Malik Tillman, if he signed, Todd Cantwell, uh, Fashion, Nicholas Raskin, players, you know, the, the creative players that Rangers currently have on their team would be a very exciting prospect. And I'm sure that Madja would be a good um, partner to uh, Ch uh, Cholak as well. If uh, Michael Beale chose to go with two up top, you know, that could be another possibility. Cholak, it was like a big man, uh, little man kind of combination, there, although five foot 11 is not exactly little. Uh, Madja is certainly someone who, you know, Rangers fans would definitely be excited to see in the Royal Blue. I think he would be a very good purchase. Now, he's currently available, uh, uh, according to rumours, in a number of papers this morning. Um, some of Echo being one of them, some of the Nationals, um, Transfer Tavern on the online, Football World online, at about £4 million. But Rangers are apparently, according to all these sources, highly interested in the Bordeaux player and would like to make him a per make a permanent move for Madger to bring him to Ibrox. Now, my, like I said, my personal opinion is this would be a very good signing. Having seen this boy play, he is a very talented striker, so it would be an exceptionally good move. In the uh, reports, that are put out about Madrid, it does seem that this uh, signing would be as a replacement for Alfredo Morelos. Despite what uh, Michael Beale said yesterday, it does seem highly likely that Morelos will be allowed to leave the club at the end of the season. It does seem that he has served his youthful purpose and obviously we wish him all the best in wherever he may go. And I know that obviously divides fans' opinions as to where Morelos, I suppose, whether to keep Morelos or whether to allow him to leave. Is certainly something you know that divides the fan base. I've obviously just, I've, just on that. I put a poll out on my Twitter earlier at Glasgow Nation. That's my Twitter handle or Glasgow Rangers Nation. You can find under that. There's a little poll running there. Should Morella stay or go? So please vote in that. Also find us on Instagram, great Instagram, Instagram even at Glasgow Rangers Nation. And my email address there, if you want to drop me an email about any content you'd like to see or questions, or if you've got photographs from the game that you'd like me to feature on the podcast, please drop them to me at glasgowrangersnation at gmail.com. Com. Okay, guys, just a little bit, a little bit of housekeeping before we go as well. Please look out for the podcast tonight, my solo show podcast tonight, uh, where I will be talking about all the news and views from around Reigns, about Kyle Fox, about Scott Arfield's possible contract, about Nicholas Raskin's injury, about Malate Tillman's return to form, etc., etc. And then come and join us on Sunday, the nineteenth of March, um, at around about seven p.m. in the evening, where I will be joined by the fantastic Victoria Searle. Um, to discuss all things Glasgow Rangers. Uh, Victoria is a, Glas a Glasgow girl. She is a, a big, huge supporter of the club. She um, attended the final in Seville, the Euro Europa League final, um, and has been a massive, massive Rangers fan. She also does a lot of work um, as well with uh, work on social media, uh, with obviously talking about Glasgow Rangers as well. So please look out for that. Guys, if you want to find the podcast and you want to get the notification to do is you need to look for the following thumbnail on my and press the notify me uh, button. I'll bring up this thumbnail now so you can quickly see it. And you can also see Victoria as well. So you can see who will be on with me. And there's also a rather dodgy picture of me on there as well. So please check that out. That would be great if you could. There we go. There's me and Victoria. And that is the pod podcast coming up on Sunday where we'll also be looking back on the Motherwell game, the players out of contract and the rest of the season. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching Glasgow Rangers Nation. No surrender ever.